Sorry. Good evening, everyone. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry. Our okay. first item on our agenda for tonight is our New York Forward Grant. I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I invite Ann to speak on this grant. Okay. So as some of you have heard repeatedly, we are in the process of applying for a New York Forward Grant for $4.5 million for revitalization of business districts. This grant application is actually due this coming Friday at 4 o'clock. And so we are working to pull the information together to make it as competitive as possible. We opened the public hearing uh, at the last meeting, and it's important that we demonstrate uh, public commitment and uh, interest in this project. The grant program focuses on four aspects, improving transportation and connectivity in and around the business district, uh, development projects, redevelopment projects, and branding. And it can include public-private kinds of partnerships. We should be trying to identify multiple projects, uh, potential projects, and they're also looking to see that there's a committee of interested citizens, business leaders, electeds, and so forth. So what I'm hoping to hear from some of you here tonight is what your vision might be for how Kent could use this funding, uh, what some of the possible projects might be, uh, what it is about Kent that makes us special, and how we might be able to use that to help revitalize our business district. And what we're focusing on for the grant specifically is sort of three sides of Lake Carmel, so 311 from 84 out to 52, and then 52 south to Towners Road, and then Towners Road heading east on the south side of the lake. And part of this might be connecting the walking path around Lake Carmel uh, to these different regions. So I have some written commentary that was submitted from one resident. I would like to read that first, and then we could open it up uh, to others who wish to comment. So this is from Kathy Kong, who's an entrepreneur who lives here in Kent. Sorry, I can get closer. And uh, so she wrote uh, that she understands that the goal is to create a Kent business district that ties Towners Road to 52 and 311 in, together in several ways. Wayfinding signage, lighting, sidewalks, additional parking, marketing and branding, and then working with existing businesses on storefront improvements, window display, lighting, signage, customer circulation, etc. Also to work with Arts on the Lake to further develop their facility so they have the capability to provide, well, she says daily programming, maybe that's a bit ambitious, I'll ask uh, Bob about that, uh, possibly tie in with Lake Carmel Community Center in some way as a satellite. Uh, work with existing property owners on how to better market their vacant space and make improvements that will attract foot traffic. Look at current customer dwell time and figure out programming opportunities to extend that time through programming, such as the upcoming cider stroll, or amenities such as electric car charging or bike share, or maybe make the new Kent Business District an interactive exercise loop of some kind. Two, how to achieve this goal? Need economic development, business development consulting help, need to engage existing local businesses to participate. Look at zoning and town code and how it specifically helps or hurts businesses in that area. What can we do to make Kent more attractive to a new business as compared to Brewster or Mayapak or Carmel? Tap organizations such as Main Street USA, International Downtown Alliance, etc., to get some specific help for our existing businesses. Look at case studies of other small town downtown redevelopment to come up with ideas that will work in Kent. Meet with every property owner in the Kent Business District to brainstorm on what their individual needs are and what the town can do to help fill vacancies, how to bring the right mix of businesses to our town. Conduct some economic and business analysis of existing town businesses to figure out where the gaps are and what types of businesses would be a good fit for Kent. Develop an outreach and marketing program to reach out to these potential new businesses. This is a long-term project that needs to be approached at a high level and executed on a building-by-building building level. 
It will take several departments in the town's coordinated effort to pull this off. Hope this helps. And then she adds, sorry, I'm unable to attend the meeting tonight. I would love to participate on any committee that will be delving into this project. Thank you, Kathy Kahn. And I have forwarded this to Lana for the uh, records. Thank you. Thank you. And so now it's open to anybody else who would like to speak on this matter. So, Kathy, just one second. Yeah. Um, and before we get too far into the comments on this, let's <coughs> clarify what has to be submitted by Friday, because I think it's, you know, we're not doing a full, we have time after the submittal. It's more of the idea of it, correct? Well, the application goes in this Friday, but we do not have to have detailed perspective and estimate, perspectives and estimates of what we would do. In fact, part of uh, what New York Forward provides is planning assistance to the municipality. So we would be working with state uh, employed, you know, state contracted planners to help us sort out which of our potential projects we would be doing and what the whole program would look like and how that $4.5 million would be spent. So we don't have to have that worked out in detail. But the narrative uh, and a lot of information has to be supported this week. So we've been pulling together um, many thanks to people in the community who've provided uh, information and also um, people here in town who've provided information on vacant properties, on um, investments in um, institutions such as Arts on the Lake and so forth. So we're, we're starting to pull all of that together and the uh, grants firm is writing the narrative. But you're right, we don't have to have an exact layout of how that 4.5 million would be spent. Uh, that's where we'll be getting some assistance if we're lucky enough to get this funding. Thank you. Kathy Darty, um, I know I spoke with you, Ann, about this before, but as a shovel-ready project, um, the sewer can be extended uh, phase three to the arts on the lake and it's all ready to go, and there's a book and maps and everything ready. So if that helps you, you know, add into the application, you know. And I have an old study um, from consultant firm, and it was a Town of Kent niche marketing plan. I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. If you want this copy, I'd give it to you. Um, but again, I you know I go through old papers, and if I find stuff, I, and I would like to be on the committee if I can. May I, may I comment? That's okay to do. Yes, yeah, so I will say the niche marketing plan and also um, another plan that we got from Bill Nolk that I think preceded that have been forwarded to the grant firm. Um, we've been told that infrastructure projects per se are less appealing, but we could certainly include the extension of the sewer district as part of the application and uh, leave it up to the grant firm and or uh, New York Forward to decide whether or not that would go forward. And also, we did have a grant for our sidewalks, and it was $2 million at one time through the county, and we were told that it would only be a quarter mile. It's usually um, a million a mile, or it was back then. Um, so again, I think having it, it was supposed to go from shop right up, but like you said, you know, maybe the town, like if you had the uh, walking path and then up to a sidewalk and then down, to, you know, down 52, it might be easier than them coming from where they were coming from. Thank you. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, Henry Boyd, uh, local well driller on, on Boyd Well Drilling, and I'm also the chair of the uh, Chamber of Commerce here in town, uh, Carmel Kent Chamber. Of course, I let Kathy go up ahead of me, and I, will, <laughs> I wanted to talk about the sewer system, and the, the sewer system should be extended. Uh, if Arts on the Lake, if they expand theirs, they're going to need uh, extra uh, sewage control. And I just put that new lawn in there, and they're not going to put no stinking sewer line underneath my new lawn. I just put it in there. Um, <coughs> but besides that, uh, right across the street from Arts on the Lake, now the, the line, the sewer line has to extend up that far, or should extend that far. There's houses up there, up, up on the hill, right along between Barrett Hill and uh, and right in front of Hearts on the Lake. I drilled wells in there years ago, 10 feet from the septic tanks, uh, right in the front yard, in the parking area, and then they blacktopped over the well and the septic system. These people are gonna have problems and their, their water's gonna uh, leach down uh, to the lake sooner or later. 
There's a whole row of houses from the Hollywood Inn up to the, the traffic light on 311. I'd like to promote getting the finishing up of the sewer system. Uh, if we can't uh, get the grant for that, uh, our, cha our chamber, uh, Bill Nock and I came up with an idea that you could dump sewage from the uh, honey wagons uh, into the sewer system here. And the last administration was totally against that uh, because of the administration before that. Um, but you could take a, a, a honey wagon, dump it in, and process it through the sewage treatment plant. At the time, the numbers were four to five hundred dollars we could get per truck, and we estimated um, probably eight or ten trucks a day. At five hundred dollars a truck, that'd be five thousand dollars a truck. Uh, even if they only give us that grant as a loan, we could probably pay for the, for it just through the sewer trucks. And uh, they said the the sewage was uh, uh, too thick. And I have a way of drilling a well and, and thinning out. The, the sewer system, uh, the, the sewage from the sewer system. So anyway, that's one thought that's it's really necessary. That's probably the most necessary thing that, that, that's out there. The other thing is sidewalks. Like Kathy said, we had, we had sidewalks all approved. The Chamber of Commerce was working on this for years, trying to get sidewalks in. And all of a sudden, there was money, and all of a sudden, Carmel got all the sidewalks, and we got zero. Um, the board here, I noticed that you've waived uh, sidewalks on some of the new projects, which I don't think you should do. If people just put 100 feet of sidewalk in every time they have a new, new construction, after a while, 100 and 100 and 100 all add up, and we'd have sidewalks. Because the kids, I live across the street from the Kent schools, and uh, kids that are late or get tardy getting to school back and forth, uh, their parents walk them to school, they're, they're walking out on the road. I mean, if anybody has kids that walk up the roof down 52, uh, they're supposed to walk in behind that white line, but that's not going to protect you from a car. I definitely would like to see that. Uh, the, uh, there's a lot of cleanup that can be done in here. I'm not gonna, I have no specific plans for that. Uh, I know there's a lot of infrastructure that could be improved in our town, and I think that if you don't have to have a specific um, plan on Friday, uh, just our infrastructure, which is mostly mostly the uh, uh, the sewer system. The baseball fields. Two years ago, my kids were playing baseball up there. There was ruts in the field three inches, four inches deep. They stopped using them up on the Kent schools because the, the fields were never taken care of. And I don't know, I don't think that's the town board has anything to do with that, but we need money to make those fuels proper and, and uh, so nobody gets hurt on them. That's, the problem that's, with those fields, I'm just going to tell you, is that we used to rent them and we paid to rent them. And they said it, the price is the same, but we're not going to fix up the fields and you're still going to pay the same price to rent them. And we said they don't want to put money into the fields. That's the school district. It's, you know, and they, they don't want to well, put anything into even it. Even their own kids coming out of the school. I know. You know, it just, it's, it's not, it wouldn't take They're a lot to fix They're in horrible condition, but they don't want to put money into it yeah. at the schools. This is, somebody needs a good spanking. So, <laughs> all right, well, thank you. So, Henry, just a few comments on what you said. Um, I agree 100% on everything. I mean, it's, but I think the emphasis on this grant cannot be infrastructure. It's, it's a lower scoring point to deal with infrastructure. So we're going to have to come up with a, a, a way around that. There, there, there's emphasis on this grant and, and went through the four points of it. Um, but unfortunately, the sewer would lo lower the ranking of it, the infrastructure of that. We are trying to get, as things are going through the planning board, and 311 is a good example, the, le the sidewalk right of ways put into the plans of the developments that are coming in up there uh, for future installation of the sidewalk. I'd be a little more nervous to put, make people put blocks of sidewalk in that would encourage them to try to go out on the road and come back and forth again. I think it, it's a little premature at this point, but having it planned for the future, I do believe in. And one thing confused me a little bit, and I need a little clarification on what you said. You want to drill wells to thin septic? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, when, when you dump uh, a septic truck, 
uh, uh, there's manholes here in town where you could dump the septic. There's pumping systems in there. Didn't and we they could, just go right to the septic plant to offload? N uh, well, it would be for a truck's just pulling up the side of Route 52. There, there's areas that you could pull off right by where the manholes are. And uh, there was, was two things. They told me the septic was too thick. I mean, I was taken up there to the sewer plant and told by the last administration, you can't, you can't do that. And uh, they had somebody else came out and tell me you couldn't do it. And lots of other people says, you can, uh, if the sewage is too thick. And I can understand pumping it out of a septic tank. So you, you just drill a well and, and right where they're dumping it in and, and dilute it. Uh, that, that, that's easy. That's easy. Then they, the next reason they came up with it was uh, there might be rocks in the septic they're dumping in. So it's easy enough to put a screen in. Um, the people just didn't want to hear the idea, but it, it, for this town, we could pay for it. We could pay for it, the additional. Well, it's, it's a good idea. I, I, I cringe at the thought of septic trucks pulling up to manholes on 52 well, and offloading. Well, um, but if we had a facility for that somewhere, where is the staging it, facility? We'd have to limit it only to Lake Carmel people, uh, because the, you have septic trucks from 900 miles away coming. The only place you can dump septic is in Danbury. So the trucks, if a trucker has to drive from here to Danbury and back, he's going to make like two loads a day, maximum. The other place is Dover. It's up in the Wingdale, Dover area. There's a, a dump station. And they're a little less expensive, but the roads going to Dover aren't as, half as good as the roads going to uh, the, the Danbury station. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I, first of all, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Bradley. I'm a, uh, I'm a local broker. Uh, I'm uh, also the president of Arts on the Lake. It's extremely nice to hear our name mentioned uh, as often as it was. Um, just as kind of an uh, in introduction, I've been working on bringing commercial development to Kent for probably about 35 years. Uh, I was the past chairman of the Kent IDA. I was the uh, I was former chairman of the Kent Zoning Board. Uh, I, I was the past president of the, uh, of, of the Putnam County Board of Realtors. I was uh, a member of the East of Hudson uh, when we met with the City of New York to plan all of the purchases around the town of Kent. I'm a, I'm a director of the Chamber of Commerce in Kent. I'm one of the founders of uh, Arts on the Lake and I'm the current president. And uh, I was the past president of Plan Kent, which is Plan Land and Nature Kent. Uh, we're the people who are responsible for a lot of the environmental constraints laws in town, of which everyone curses us for. But it, it, made, a lot of, uh, it made a lot of difference uh, within the town. Uh, the town of Kent, as I saw it, and I saw it for many years, is uh, actually in three sections. If you looked at the section from about the Hollywood Motel down to ShopRite, that's one complete different section. If you look at Towner's Road in the area of Towner's Road over to, uh, what the heck is that road that goes down, Hillendale, whatever it was, that goes past the fairways, that's one other section. And there's a section up uh, over by the Kent Schools. We have three completely disconnected sections of the town of Kent. And um, there's a problem finding some way to connect them. I mean, we tried for years to get uh, companies to come up. With the, new, uh, with the new districts up here, with the IOC districts, one of the problems that we always found out in the city, uh, going down into the city and trying to talk to people to come up here and do back offices, one of the great problems we had was infrastructure. Um, if, you, if you would consider the fact of Route 84 as, a, uh, as an old railroad, and uh, we are extremely lucky and can't have two stations. We have one railroad station on 311. We have one railroad station on, uh, up the road on Ludingdonville Road. Those are the ideas now in the modern world, as opposed to having trains now, we have cars. And the cars go to those railroad stations. And those stations should be developed. I mean, the problem was well, they were developed with the gas stations. And uh, we probably could have found a better way. There is, uh, uh, there's certainly property off Ludington Little Road that can be uh, made into something different. Uh, the property on 311 is, is uh, uh, kind of problems. Uh, the old Barrett garage, uh, we unfortunately represent the owner on that, and any number of people have come up to me to do something like that, and he has no intention of doing anything uh, on that building for quite a while. 
Uh, it's an eyesore to the town. It's an eyesore to us who have our offices on 311. Um, with the, uh, uh, one of the things with the Art Center is the first thing in all the years I've been working on commercial development in Kent, the first thing I've actually developed is Arts on the Lake. And uh, I'm extremely proud of that. And uh, if you take a look at, I, I just brought this book today, The Hudson Valley and the Catskill Mountains, Only the Best Places. And in this book is Arts on the Lake and uh, the Monastery, <coughs> the only two things in the town of Kent that are in this guidebook that goes into the entire Hudson Valley. Um, for the town of Kent, besides the fact of recreation and the arts, uh, there isn't a whole lot. I think driving down Route 52, we see that we are getting some kind of a, uh, an identity on the fact of the stores that we have that are selling uh, old stuff. Um, I hate to say that they're uh, antiques, but we have one, two, three, four, five stores that I think sell stuff for houses. Um, we are getting some kind of a, uh, we are getting some known for, for something. And if we're known for the arts and if we're known for antiques, I think that's a great thing to be known for. Um, so anyway, that's, um, I think I have, I, I said it's great to hear about this grant. I've been doing this for a long, long time for the town of Kent. And it's about time that we're, we're actually doing something. There were great plans that were done a few years ago by the city of New York out of a company out of, uh, out of Boston. And they came up with an idea to create a town center off Route 52 down by where the jewelry store is and the old oil tank. And at that time, the administration that I, I was a part of at that time decided not to do it. Um, we also, I think there's uh, one other thing that's very important too, if, if we can create, we tried very hard years ago to create a, uh, a township with our own name. And uh, we had come up with Kent Lakes which is, we would hope would be, become the official name of the town to separate us from Carmel. And um, we also tried very hard to get a post office and our own zip code. I believe that the Kent Primary School has a zip code and the town of Kent doesn't. Um, if, you, if you could remember years ago, there used to be a, uh, a small post office up on 311 alongside where our uh, office is now. It's been long gone. But we, we need some kind of an identity and some, some kind of an, uh, an uh, identity that's ours alone. And um, however I can help uh, when this is, please, well, uh, you know, well, let me know. And as I say in my head, uh, you know, if you look at that, art matters. <laughs> just, uh, I think it's a great thing for the town. And, and uh, we certainly need a lot of help. We were really hurt during the pandemic badly. And we were closed for two years and we still haven't recovered. And um, I think it's great. We serve over 5,000 people a year, and it grows every year. The amount of public we have grows every year. We work with the local businesses. We work with the local restaurants. We have the local bakery come down to our Friday concerts, and she makes probably the best empanimas in town. And um, so that's, that's it. Uh, any possible way I can help, please. And thank you very did, much. Did you just say that the school has its own zip code in Canada? Yeah, I think they use it for the kids. They do mailing up there in the thing. No. They gave them a zip code. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that always kind of annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Carl? I wasn't here for this tonight. My name is Carl Albano. I think the first thing before any of this is the sewers. Um, this grant is great, but if you're not prepared, and you don't have the facilities to make the grant work, it's not gonna really be very useful. When you talk about the corridor that was just mentioned, 52, 311, um, Towners Road, it's imperative they have sewers. If you really wanna grab commercial growth, if you really wanna see the place move to the next century, and then just for the health of the lake, it was interesting, Mr. Boyd had mentioned um, some of the houses up there, and I owned one of them. My septic was eight feet from the well, and it is paved. Uh, fortunately, the well's been good, but you just say your prayers. But it's imperative. It really has to happen. So really, that's the first thing. I think that should be going on without this grant so that when monies are available, you're prepared and you'll be able to you know, pull the trigger and see it all happen. Sewers are imperative for that whole area. I think one of the issues with our sewer district that we have now is that there's so few businesses on it currently that they're paying way more than they should. So it's unfortunate that it's kind of 
the cart before the horse scenario, you need the, the businesses to be able to tie into it to make it affordable for the businesses to be on there. So if we put it in now, but we don't have the businesses, it's just going to put more cost onto the the, the, the ones that are hooked up to the sewer district. Sure, I mean, the good thing is, it's, as, as Kathy Doherty said, we have a phase three already ready to go. It's, it's engineered, and it's a shovel-ready project, basically. Um, but we gotta make sure that we're gonna have the hookup. Now, I have a question, that, Kathy, you may be able to answer this. As far as hooking houses into that sewer district, it's not allowed, correct? There's no residents hooked into that sewer district. No, there are. Well, there are? there's a couple on 52. There's a couple of houses on 52 that are in the sewer district just because they're in the line of it, and they're in commercial property. They're on commercial property. Right, but that's not commercial property over there. Right. And the, this only goes to the arts and the lake, and the um, the allotment for the uh, sewer has already been given to the arts on the lake. So if you wanted to extend it, you'd have to do another map plan and report. And right. So what's the deal with it only being allowed for commercial use? Do you remember what that was about? Because the whole infrastructure, everything we did was just for the um, commercial corridor. Is there... Because, just because we didn't have enough money. It was $6 million is just there, for the infrastructure. But it's, it's not that the sewer plant itself couldn't handle residential use, is it? It's not big enough. Like Henry was saying, if we, we wanted to do this too with, with um, you know, having the private corridors go in there. And I've heard two different things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's doable but it's still not big enough. They would have to add on to the plant in order to take in more houses, which could be a possibility, or you have a, you know, um, a substation you know, of, a, of the plant. I mean, that's why we have the pump stations, but I mean, you could probably add on, because it stopped at um, Anthony's Jewelers. You know? I mean, if you wanted to go down further, I guess if you wanted to put in, but again, this was six million just for- you know, Very right. short, short section, really. Right. All right, thank you. Did we ever get estimates for phase three, cost estimates? Not off the top of my, I do remember some things. I think it was like 300,000, but I, it might be in here. But that's a long time ago. Those right. costs right. are gonna be through the roof now. But that's yeah. what I had in my room for now. So one thing we might ask the grant firm is whether it is appropriate to go ahead and put this in knowing that infrastructure isn't favored, but if this is really a prerequisite to do the other things that we want to do, we need to be upfront about that. So, and, and also, if Kent Manor is coming in, then it will help the whole area. That'll help offset costs for it, absolutely, because right. they have a right to tie it. Right, so they are planning on building, so if we did the phase <coughs> three, I mean, it all kind of ties into the whole plan that we had originally. Right. Thank you. If I could add one more thing. It is hard with the cost, but I could just say I'm in sewer district two in the town of Carmel. I paid sewer taxes probably for, I don't know, 30 years without sewers. It was what was necessary to get it to the next level. Now we finally have sewers. Somewhere you have to just get ahead of it. You're never going to get the commercial growth. Wait, wait, just back up. They created a sewer district without there being a sewer there and had yes. people paying a sewer district tax, yes. but not being, not, but no sewer district. No, the sewer, no sewer system. In the sewer district, but we didn't have sewers. How in the many street. years did that go on for? Uh, 30, 40 years, all the time I've been yeah, here. I guess you could pay for it after that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's almost impossible. Like, you're not going to get the structures to build if the ground can't handle it. So, you know, if somebody will come in and look at a piece of property, it's just not going to happen if it's not feasible. Right. With the septics and the wells and the requirements of the health department today, it's very restrictive. So somewhere somebody has to start, get ahead of it. It hurts, but in the long run, it, it makes sense. And when the sewer plant is utilized to its full capacity, that's the most effective. Uh, Absolutely, that's expense. what they're designed for. And that's what you want to shoot for. Right. You'd, you'd attract the right businesses if that was in place. Wow. 30 years wow. of paying for a sewer yeah. district tax with no sewer. I, 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 that's that's a first for me, Carl. I've never heard that before. Absolutely. Probably 40 years. Before. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Hi. My name's Katrina. I'm just a resident. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly. You said transportation, development, branding, and redevelopment is what the four criteria are. Um, and so I've heard a lot of talk about sewage, but I think that also when we talk about what steps we take, we should be mindful that road drainage is you know, one step, 
in what we have to do before sewage, and also just a water treatment facility in general. Where does that water go to? Where is it just dumping to? So maybe in the transportation and development aspect, we can look more into getting an architect or an engineer to come out and look at the whole picture. Because everybody's, you know, we've had a lot of people talk about the 52311 aspect of it, and I think the low area on this side would be this property. Um, and, you know, without having an engineer or anybody look at it and look at the whole picture and look at where the low areas really are, um, when you talk about transportation and development, maybe starting there with where does our road runoff go and will that funding help get an architect to come out here and maybe the town can pick up the sewage that follows with it, but getting an architect to really look at the bigger picture and not just trying to bite off sewage because, you know, sewage is one part of it, but a water treatment facility might be um, more plausible. You know. So just to understand, a water treatment facility for the, the sewage or for, what are we treating? What water are we treating? Well, where all of, well, it's, it's all the pipes uh, in general. I mean, where does everything We go? don't have a water district around the lake. It's all, everybody's on a well. Yeah. So we can't but treat we have, everybody's individual well. We have roads and we have drains. And where do they go? And so a sewage, a sewage station is going to go to the low point. And an engineer and an architect is going to be better off than I am to tell you where those low points are. So maybe in the transportation and development aspect of it, when we apply for this, we say that we want to help, we need somebody to come help look at the bigger picture so that we can take steps towards sewage and be, you know, cards on the table in that aspect, but also look at our road drainage. Where's our road drainage going? Because transportation and development goes hand in hand with the the, the branding and redeveloping. If we have roads that people want to drive on, you're going to want to go to our community and shop there. Right? So um, just, you know, hearing what everybody else had to say in regards to well and septic, obviously that's something I care about because I live in this community too. But in regards to this specific um, grant, you know, how can we get this money and then use that to, uh, you know, fulfill the bigger picture of the sewage? So I don't know if that's something that you guys can take into it, you know, an architect and an engineer, because we really need an architect and an engineer specifically to look at Lake Carmel, you know? I feel. Uh, Simon Carey, Kent resident. Um, we're discussing obviously the 52 business district in there. Everybody's been seeing the sidewalks and that's a major part of what you need around those sidewalks because if you're going from Lake Carmel and you were trying to get around by foot, down to a, you want to just take a walk down like I don't live too far from like uh, Bernie's treasure and that mm -hmm. but to walk that I have to go down 52 and you know it's quite dangerous for my kids and that I can't even send my kids down there so it'd be good for if we could get you know sidewalks to go along there that's one thing because we have to attract businesses in and if they're they're going to come in they need to be able to say okay we're going to have foot traffic if we don't have foot traffic, you have drive-by traffic, but that's not as much as foot traffic, which will help it quite a bit. And uh, just, what was the other thing I was going to say? I can think now. But um, the, to try and revitalize that area, because as you can see, it's run down. I know now what I was going to say. On 52, in that area, that's a state road. It is not paved. You come out of Carmel, it's lovely and paved up to the Carmel Kent line. And when we go through Kent, it picks up nice the other side. I know it's nothing to do with you guys. It's the state. It, it, but it really, you know, you know what, if, yeah. if we could get that even done as well, it would, you know, entice people to come in we, as well. We've been trying to I, get I, that I, done. I, I do know that. And we I think, actually, Carl, we you wrote list. a letter too. No, we're not. Well, we, we were. were. We and were. then they said, no, there's not. no plans in the foreseeable future to pave that. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, like Kent is the town that's forgotten about. Yes. The and sidewalks, we, the sidewalks, and the new pavement end at the Carmel. Exactly, mm -hmm. and it yeah. doesn't go through, and that's where we need to proceed. You know, proceed with this because you're not going to get people to come in and open up. You know, businesses and that if you don't get, you know, foot traffic, as I said, and decent roads, and obviously infrastructure is a major issue. But that's a completely different, uh, hopefully, a different you know fund we can get to help with that. So we've, we've had internally many talks about sidewalks, and especially for this grant, because initially our focus was going to be from the Carmel line 
to bring the sidewalks down through. We had to re, you know, just in some more recent discussions, decided to pick the U shape of Towner's Road and 52 and 311 as our, our focal point for this grant mm -hmm. specifically. But I think it's very important that we focus on sidewalks and get them all the way to the Carmel line. And I've said this from, from day one that the, the, um, the population that may not be as well off as some of us needs those sidewalks. That's, that's their link to get to the grocery store, to get to the pharmacy. And like you said, I literally see them walking down 52. It's unsafe and we have to make sure that the underserved community has those links to the necessities they need to live in our town. So I think it's very, very important that the sidewalks be a major focus on this grant application. I agree. No one else? Let me close it. All right. Um, well, do we have to vote on it now? We have to vote on it tonight, don't we, Anne, to, to go for the grant? We have to we have a resolution. We, we're good. We have everything we need. We I don't want any issues like... Oh, you know, I don't know if there's a resolution of acceptance. I think that's what we have to do, a resolution. I think that's what I read in there, that we need a resolution of acceptance to apply for the grant. Normally, they would provide that wording, so... I didn't see... Uh, I will check. Well, we have to make a motion to close the public hearing. Yes. Okay, I make a motion to close the public... Sure. Okay. I'll take that back. Looking for ideas. We're talking about... Yeah, Henry Boyd again. You're talking about roads. Yeah, we need to, definitely need some roads. I know that Rich Opter has been doing a great job putting in roads, but he's also been spending an awful lot of town money. And I think to maybe get some little, little bit of a grant money for the roads. And Lake Carmel, Lake Carmel is a disaster, all these little roads in here. The other thing is, you know, we're having a little bit of a drought. And a lot of people are having uh, dry wells. And one of the problems is with the storm water, and we have a storm water committee, but they're talking about you know putting in a bigger pipe so we get rid of the water. Uh, but that wa that's water that should be going down into the aquifers down below. It should be filling up people's wells. So you're possibly thinking about uh, retention basins everywhere, so the water kind of number one retention basin slows the water down from flooding out the lakes, so it stops a lot of flooding conditions. And retention basins also, the water should be soaking into the ground so that it recharges the water. Because every time it rains, all that water, we had three inches of rain two weeks ago, that water did not soak into the ground. When it gets very dry like it's been, the ground gets hard, and most of the water ran off. Uh, the water that did soak in is soaked up by the, the vegetation, the grass gets it. What the grass doesn't get, it as it soaks in, the bushes get, the trees get, nothing went in, into the, the lower formations where the wells are. So a good, good, good bunch of retention basins all over um, would be very, very good yep. for the, the water in the ground. We focus a lot on retention basins for a whole other reason other than what you're saying, and that's the... Uh, the phosphorus levels in the lakes. The retention basins stop the phosphorus from getting to the lakes. So we retain that water, the basins hold the phosphorus, and the water gets back into the ground system. So there's, we, we do do retention basins. We're doing them through east of Hudson, east of, I said that wrong, um, east of Hudson Watershed. Watershed Corporation, and we've been putting them around Lake Carmel. But, and, and that's tying into a lot of the runoff from the but hills around Lake Carmel. You've been putting them in, in, in around the lake. That we have. But I'm they're talking at, they're about at the bottom of the hill. There's no at, doubt about go, it. Go halfway up Barrett Hill and stick a few in. But they're, they're doing it for water quality purposes. They want to catch as much of that water as they can before it gets to the lake and filter it out in those locations. So do I. I want to soak it in the ground. I, I hear you. you know? Of course, actually, business is good this year, so I don't say, worry you're, about that. You're kind of uh, <laughs> trying to cut your own business here, aren't you? you know? <laughs> it's, it is what it is. So just out of curiosity, while we got you up here, and I hate to sidetrack too much, but how is the drought situation on our local area wells? Have you had to, uh, are they going dry? Have you had There's to, a, lot of, a lot of wells, shallow wells, are going dry, and the health department has declared... Uh, uh, restrictions on some of the water systems that are on wells, um, but people with wells less than 100 feet deep are having problems. And the biggest problem is uh, their next door neighbor is out there sprinkling their, their yard. 
A house and a family doesn't use a lot of water, uh, four or 500 gallons a day tops. But when you turn on the sprinkler system, you're gonna use thousands of gallons of water. You bring that water up out of the aquifers and blow it on the ground, half of it evaporates and some of it goes back and just feeds the grass and so we keep depleting the aquifers. I mean, I have people calling me up. Uh, there's more irrigation goes on probably south of us here. And I got people to call up and say, well, you know, I'm watering the lawn and I can't flush the toilet. And some of these people don't understand. You shut the irrigation off and the toilet's gonna start to work again. So, but uh, if we could get, if we could save some of that water so it doesn't run into Lake Carmel and run away as fast, it'd be to our advantage over time. Oh, Thank you. All right, Ann, so I think you're correct. We just have to have a public hearing for the, before we, before we submit the application, unless you found anything different. I'm just searching the email, it's been a, Do you I, wanna see, I, this is the one that I found. But you know, last time we didn't think we needed I know, that. that's we why I said we don't wanna so have that problem because it's ahead. Tuesday and if it's due by Friday, we just don't wanna have any issues. I make a motion to close the public oh, I hearing. Did. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now we can get on with the real meeting. Well, we'll put that off and we can always vote on it. That's going to be on the regular agenda. Yeah, I know. So we'll, we'll just keep going. Um, Lana, can we have roll call, please? Sure. Uh, Supervisor Velasquez. Present. Council Carroll. Present. Council Carroll. Present. Council Carroll. Present. Here. Here. Thank you. Um, the first item on our agenda is the planning board to release um, escrows for, th we have three separate ones that we're uh, releasing tonight. They're all on one resolution. Um, Bernie's Hidden Treasures, we are refunding, releasing $187.50. TNM Rustics Homes, $187.50. And Honey Cakes, $250. These were all unanimously voted upon at the last planning board meeting. Any comments? I'm good. I'd like to make a motion to pass a resolution releasing the escrow for inspection fees, whereas the planning board by resolution number 12 of the year 2022, dated September 8, 2022, has recommended that the town board release the remaining escrow for inspection fees for a sign application in the amount of $187.50 to the agent of the owner of the property located at 531 Route 52, Suite 4, Carmel, New York, 10512 as shown on the town of Kent tax map as 33.48-1-6 and whereas the planning board by resolution number 13 of the year 2022 dated September 8th, 2022 has re recommended that the planning board release the remaining escrow for inspection fees for a sign application in the amount of $187.50 to the agent of the owner of the property located at 531 Route 52, Suite 1, Kent, New York as shown on the town of Kent tax map number 38.48-1-6 and whereas the planning board by resolution of number 14 of the year 2022 dated September 8th, 2022 has recommended that the town board release the remaining escrow for inspection fees for a sign application in the amount of $250 to the agent of the owner of the property located at 1100 Route 52 Suite 103 Kent, New York as shown in the on the Kent, town of Kent tax map as 12.1-55 and whereas the town board wishes to accept the recommendations as set forth in the planning but in planning board resolutions number 12 13 and 14 of the year 2022 and now therefore it be it resolved that the town board of the town of Kent hereby accepts the recommendations of the planning board for the releases as further detailed above I make this motion second all in favor aye, aye. okay our next item is also from the planning board. It is to accept an erosion control bond in the amount of $34,314 and a final inspection fee in the amount of $1,000 for Kent storage, the Kent self storage property. This was also voted on by the planning board unanimously. I make a motion to adopt the resolution accepting erosion control surety bond and escrow for inspection fee and performance bond for long-term stormwater management facility. Whereas the planning board by resolutions numbers 15 and 16 of the year 2022, dated September 12, 2022, has recommended that the town board accept, one, an erosion control bond in the amount of $34,414, two, inspection fees in the amount of $1,000, and three, 
a performance bond for a long-term stormwater management facility in the amount of $48,740 from the owner of the property located at 164 Route 311, Kent, New York, 10512, as shown on the Town of Kent tax map as 22.-2-17, and whereas the Town Board wishes to accept the recommendation as set forth in Planning Board Resolutions numbers 15 and 16 of the year 2022, and now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Kent hereby accepts the recommendations of the Planning Board that are an erosion control bond, inspection fee escrow, and performance bond be accepted from the owner of 164 Route 311. I hereby make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Our next item is for um, Lake Carmel for their waste disposal. It's set for the transfer station for waste innovations. Um, unfortunately, last year, no one signed a new contract with them, so this year, we are forced to take a higher rate. We were at $95.50 um, per ton, time. and now we're at $122 per ton. The only thing I could get from them fighting with them is that they raised their mattress prices from $15 to $30, and I was able to fight for them, and they made it $20 per mattress. So that was their one, the one thing that they did. And they're also unfortunately now adding fuel charges to all of their contracts due to the price of fuel. Of course, everything's going up, but mm -hmm. we've had a lot of houses sell in Lake my area, and um, people are dumping everything outside. They should be getting a dumpster, and we're picking it up. And that brings up the cost in sanitation also. So I think, you know, maybe a blurb on the Lake Carmel form, uh, Lake Carmel, um, you know, for Heidi to send out something. You know, a lot of people don't know they live in the sanitation district. They do you just think, think that's the, the best district. way to get in touch with them, or should we do a mass mailing to everybody's house? <sighs> I, I, I worry because I'm not I'm not an internet person. I don't have Facebook. I I wouldn't if I were in Lake Carmel. Right. I wouldn't get that. It'd probably be better having a letter. But I'm just saying, if you want it, because everybody had to sign up for new stickers and things this year, she has a new list. But you have a new homeowners that don't understand septic. They don't understand with the sanitation district. They're putting out things. You have families moving in. There's two and three families moving into one little house in Lake Carmel. Wait till that septic goes. So, but what's being put outside is not proper. We have garbage, not in bags. They're just, so, it's being thrown out. We uh, have been checking on some of the houses. I've been calling, uh, you know, Bill Looney's been going out and looking at some. Right, but the guys could tell you when they're doing their rounds in the know. morning, they're so good that they go pick it up. But, but they, they have really also be been calling my office telling me that they're going and getting a lot of stuff from, and they'll give me the address of the houses. Right, and so then do you send a letter to that person? We, saying, we've been handling it, been going out there, contacting them, seeing okay. what's going on. Just because if the garbage is going up, we can't continue. I know. No. It's unfortunate off. that it's going up that much, but you're right. right we can I, I do just, something. I wonder if a, mm -hmm. um, a refresher with our sanitation department, and you know, they got to learn not to be so good at taking stuff that maybe they shouldn't be taking. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say anything bad about Lake Carmel Sanitation. Nope, Lake nope. Carmel they loves their sanitation right. department. They take but, everything. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 you know what? They but are. that is above and beyond to some extent. And right. they may need to set the parameters with them again and say, listen, if you see something Let that's not know. good, don't take it. Mm -hmm. Let's get somebody up there to make sure that the people understand what they can and can't put Absolutely. up there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, do you okay. want to do this one? Sure. Uh, I make a motion to adopt a resolution to approve a contract with the transfer station. Whereas the town board of the town of Kent is in receipt of a contract from Wynn Waste Innovations to act as transfer station for waste disposal for the town of Kent sanitation department at the rate of $120 per ton of acceptable waste. And whereas the town board desires to authorize the town supervisor to execute the transfer station waste disposal agreement in the annexed in the form annexed tier two and hereby incorporated herein the agreement. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board accepts the agreement and be it further resolved that the town board of the town of Kent
hereby authorizes and directs the town supervisor to execute any and all documents, including the agreement, in a form satisfactory to the town attorney, if requested, and to take any and all other necessary or appropriate actions to give effect to this resolution. I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to add an item to the agenda for Lake Tibet. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I received this yet late yesterday from Lake Tibet. They want to move their management company. Be, well, it's kind of like what we had with the engineering company. It, it changed names. Yes. And they want to go to this uh, GEI, and they want us to authorize $4,120 for um, project management and aquatic plant survey, um, an in-person meeting, and a letter um, stating everything that they found with their research. So. I don't have a resolution, so make it up, do you wanna, okay. make it up exactly the way you just yep. said it. I make a motion to authorize Lake Tibet to use GEI um, for proposal for lake management in the amount not to exceed $4,120. I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you want to do the next one and I'll... Yeah. I make a motion to add an item to the agenda. Uh, regarding a, a, a home complaint that we're going to have our building inspector come up and discuss with us. You have to second. I can't second. Oh. second. Second, I'm sorry. You have to do it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Supervisor McGlasson is going to recuse yourself from this discussion. Bill? Good evening. Uh, Bill Walter, building inspector, town of Kent. I'm here uh, to present a complaint uh, to the town board, looking for your assistance in getting it rectified. Uh, we have a house, uh, we have three houses uh, with a problem with infestation with rodents, uh, stemming from building number one, I'll call it, which is located at 16 Anna Court. Uh, we've had a demolition permit out there. Uh, it had illegal apartments in it. We've been working with the owner to get that rectified and it is the illegal apartments are being removed. Uh, and during that demolition, the rats that were in the building have now vacated along with the people that were there. And they are now occupying the houses next door. Uh, that are occupied houses. That are occupied. So I have uh, the original bid that I gave you had two as of tonight. There's a third, there's only, there's only four houses on this road. Uh, we've done these type of events in the past. Uh, we had a house uh, for, on the other side of the town that we had a similar uh, problem with. Uh, but the three houses uh, are 16 Anna Court, 15 Anna Court, and the new addition tonight is 10 Anna Court. And the prices are there. Uh, they would place out bait boxes to uh, catch the rats and the mice and uh, there's, I believe, a one-month uh, service uh, to, to keep after it to make sure uh, it doesn't get reinvested. The other thing, uh, one house is where a lot of these rodents came from. We also have, in the pictures you'll also see, the Kent Highway Department did a uh, cleaning up of the storm drains out there and everything else. So I don't think, you know, we probably chased them out of the house and chased them into the woods and <laughs> And now we cleaned up the woods and now they have no other place to go, so they're running everywhere. So uh, I'm asking you to approve a bid uh, for 124631 uh, with the vendor. I don't know if you want me to name the vendor. But I have two bids. Uh, okay. Why that bid? It's the more expensive one. Well, one, the more expensive one is uh, three houses. And the bid that you have there uh, from the company out of Brewster shows one house. So it's actually, it's more than that. It's, it's 900. And now with the third one, because they do, their bids go by square footage. All right. Um, and even by square footage, this, the second bid that's there is cheaper than, than the company out of Brewster. And uh, this other company's local. Um, not the other one, the other one's local also, but. And we've dealt with uh, Ted Hill best control. All right, before. so you, you, you've given us two bids. Right. But you have a third? 
I do not have a third. Did you try to get a third? I can try to get a third. Uh, during Is the meantime, we're still dealing with a rat problem. Procurement, I think we have to have three. Unless this is some kind of an emergency situation. Yes. Yeah, unless it's an emergency. Um, the third can just be a request if the, no one gets back to you. We have to at least try to get a third quote. Okay, so that means these folks are going to deal with a rat problem for two more weeks until we have another meeting, correct? Can we authorize him to go with the lowest bid? If the third one comes in lower, that you can use it? Okay. We'll give you the authorization to take the lowest of the three bids you got. Okay. Is that fair? That sounds workable. <laughs> okay. And just keep a record of the three bids. Right. So what I'm going to do is make a motion not to exceed not, exceed that not to exceed what we know you got right now. Okay. So if it comes in lower, you can take another one, but we're not going to name the company you're going to choose at this point. Okay. It'll be the company that comes in with a little bid. Exactly. All right. So yeah, and just to add, I was looking at this. It says it's only $75 per month, but it says plus target treatments as needed. So they could come every month if they want. Well, that, so. that one company that says $75, that's $75 a per, month. I know. I and they only come that. out quarterly. So yeah, if <laughs> it, they don't, it's a little false advertising. Right. right. If they don't it's get only $75 the, a month, but they're only going to come out four correct. times. It's a little bit different way of right. billing it. We're <laughs> looking at two different scales of billing. Yeah. But this is the one currently you're recommending is $1,246.31. Correct. Okay. I think I got it. Any discussion on this? No, I think we should get, I mean, just the health issue alone. Oh, no, absolutely. He's going to be able to hopefully call and, and do it tomorrow. Correct. Right. All right. It'll, it'll go on the, uh, the tax roll for 16 uh, and a quarter, since that's what it, It's similar to what we do with the vacant houses, with cutting the grass, we right. put it onto their tax rolls. Well, we had the issue out there on the other side of the town, out on Ponderosa Road, that bill went towards that, uh, that residence. Right. So. right. All right. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion to authorize the building inspector to contract with the lowest bid that he may receive for installation of rodent bait stations around the exterior of a structure at 16 and a court for an amount not to exceed $1,150 with the understanding that he's going to get a third bid and if it comes in under that amount that he will go with that company. I make this motion. One thousand. I'm sorry. Two thousand. One thousand two hundred and forty-six dollars and thirty-one cents. I didn't add the Putnam charge into it. Whatever that is. But Bill, just to clarify, it's for sixteen, fifteen, and ten and a court, correct? Not just sixteen. <laughs> there are three dwellings that are involved in this in this hap. Sixteen and a court. 15 and a court, and 10 right. and a court. So I correct that resolution to say the installation of rodent bait stations around the exterior of the structure of 16 and a court, 15 and a court, and 10 and a court. Correct. I make this motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I want to grab Jamie, please. Thank you. Yeah, just didn't want to say all oh, we're at the No, no, no. I didn't. I was thinking that that's who was getting billed to, but it's around all of them. She ran away on us. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on her. So hopefully we won't need an emergency meeting for a resolution on this. But last time we had to have specific wording. We did want to go after the grant, I believe, when we opened the hearing. Okay. But we don't have specific words. We don't have to ask for funding agency much. That's the one we got into last time. That's usually, I think it's public comment. Okay. So. All right, so we're ready for vouchers. Yes. I ask the board to approve the following vouchers for September 20th, 2022 that are over the threshold. Allstate Electric Incorporated, $19,800 for Ryan's Field Electric Beacon Recycling, $4,010.18 for Lake Carmel Recycling. Semco Water, $8,063.11 for Town Water, Town Center Water Operations, $3,278.67 for Water District Number One Operations, 
City Carding, $5,371.77 for Lake Carmel Garbage, $7,491.87 for Lake Carmel Garbage, $10,446.69 for Lake Carmel Garbage, $7,794.85 for Lake Carmel Garbage, $7,979.40 for Lake Carmel Garbage, Hogan and Rossi, $5,416.63 for legal services for September. Home Depot, $4,055.10 for leaf bags. Hudson Valley Pattern for Progress, $7,500 for the 2022 project for vacant buildings. Hudsonia, $3,649 for our natural resources inventory. Insight Engineering, $46,049.36. For Lake Carmel Dam and Ryan's Park, Magna 5 MS $4,608.50 for network services, the metal building restoration $284,500 for requisition number 7 at the highway garage, NICOMCO $2,846 for two-way radios for the police, New York State Department of Civil Service $200 and $22,637.36 for health insurance for September. Purchase power, $3,030 for the postage meter. Ring squared, $3,438.44 for telephone services. Royal carding, $4,298.60 for recycling garbage. Um, New York State Department of Agriculture, um, I don't remember what this was, APHIS, $3,282.23 for the goose population management on Lake Carmel. I ask the board to approve the following as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I have a few announcements. Let's see. This Saturday is the Lake Carmel Black Bass Fishing Tournament, 8 a.m. sharp, begins and ends at beach number three. For more information and to sign up, you can go to the Lake Carmel Park District office or contact Bobby at bulick at comcast.net. On Saturday, October 8th from 12 to five, it's the 11th annual Caitlin Rose Savio um, event at Kiwi Country Day Camp. A uh, donation of $10 per car, allow access to tennis, mini golf, jumping pillow, basketball courts, gaga, boating, fields, and face painting. For more information, call 845-222-6908. Uh, I'm trying to make sure they're all in order by date. Okay. Our next one is on Friday, October 14th. Our recreation department will be having pumpkin painting at Edward Ryan Memorial Park from 4 to 545. It's $5 per pumpkin. And then you're not going to leave, you're going to stay, because at 6 o'clock we have Halloween bingo. The first board is free, a dollar for each additional board. We'll play 10 games, and prizes could be big or small. So that's Friday, October 14th. You can sign up online um, on Civic Rec. And then the next day you can do the cider stroll. On Saturday, October 15th, from 3 to 6, is the cider stroll through the town of Carmel. Family fun. Town shop. Kent. I'm sorry, town of Kent. Oops. Ta family fun. Shop for one of a kind finds, light fair, and local cider tasting. Event registration, tent, and parking will be at 1091 Route 52, Carmel, New York. The trolley will bring you to all locations. And if you get one of these, there's a QR code on the bottom so you can register just by, for those of you that don't know, opening up the camera on your phone and holding it over there and a link will pop and you just touch it and it'll bring you to the registration page. Does everybody know that she looked at me about those that don't know how to do that? <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, and then also on October 15th, it is Putnam County Department of Health has the Residential Household Hazardous Waste Drop-Off Day. It's in Fawnstock State Park, the Canupas Beach parking lot, 1498 Route 301, Kent, New York. You do have to pre-register you can do so by visiting putnamcountyny.com slash recycling to schedule your appointment. They will take chemicals, driveway sealer, pool chemicals, waste fuels, wood preservatives, uh, varnishes, rodent poisons, flea powders, lots of stuff. So for more information, www.putnamcountyny.com slash recycling. All right, I got my, this is my last announcement for the traveling wall coming to the Veterans Memorial Park. It's going to be coming, um, being set up on Thursday morning. I think the soft opening is at 12 o'clock, but the official opening ceremony is at 7 p.m. 
I, I encourage everybody to come out. It, it's going to be a great event. A lot of veterans, and I've said this many times, one of the honorees is going to be our own Kent resident, Dale Cusack, who we lost this past year. He was the chairman of the committee when we started this, and uh, he still is our chairman right through the end. So please come out um, Wednesday. Uh, it, you can follow the convoy in on Wednesday, and I don't have all the details, but you can look it up. You can meet it. You can follow the convoy all, all the way to the park. But Thursday morning at 8 o'clock will be the setup, and 7 o'clock at night will be the opening ceremonies and the presentations and the dedications. Unfortunately, I do have to make one announcement. We were going to have the, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier there, and they called and canceled on us on this past Saturday. So we're going to have something a little different, a whole... Uh, uh, tribute to um, the soldiers that, that died in Kandahar uh, when, during the, uh, the evacuation and um, a film playing, an educational film playing about uh, Arlington National Cemetery. So there will be something else in its place in the tent that it would have been in. But please, please take the opportunity to bring your family, your grandchildren, especially the kids. They have to see this, they have to witness it, and they have to be part of it. And when you're over there and you see a veteran, have them go up and thank them for their service. It's really important. It's important to these veterans that we remember them. So please, Wednesday, you can come anytime. It's there all the way till Sunday. You can come any time of the day. It's open 24 hours a day. So come to the park and see it. Thank you. And I'm wearing the, my new shirt for the committee chairmanship tonight. I've been wearing the old ones for the last couple of meetings trying to promote it. They finally said wear a new one this time. <laughs> I have one that I forgot. So um, I just want to thank everyone. Two weeks ago, we had our Kent Community Weekend with movie night here and community day on that Saturday. And we had so many people, but it could not have gone on without the help of our rec staff, Karen and Sam, and our highway department, um, all the volunteers. I think it was our biggest one that we've had. It was such a great success. We were all so happy. And everyone that volunteered and worked did a wonderful job. Thanks you for everyone that came. And we can't wait for next year. I guess. Okay. okay. Um, just a few announcements. On Friday night, the Carmel Rams open up their defense of the state championship. I'm sure Todd's going to kill me for saying that. But uh, their first home game is Friday night at 7 o'clock down at the high school. Uh, also, Sunday is uh, the Tunnel to Towers run walk at, in Brooklyn. Um, I've been invited uh, to the event to present a check from one of our uh, events that we held for them and it is a fantastic organization so if anybody ever wants to look at something to donate to um, they do a lot of work for wounded veterans they do a lot of work for uh, firefighters and police officers and EMTs that are wounded in the line of duty uh, on October 8th weekend uh, there's a homecoming parade in the, in the home game on Saturday also the Knights of Columbus is having their Oktoberfest. And then the last thing, and definitely not least, is please, if you are not registered to vote, you have until October 14th. You can go to vote.org, you can go to Putnam County Board of Elections, you can go to the New York State Board of Elections, and you can literally register in two minutes. Um, I've asked my classes at school to do it. I can't force them to, but one of our biggest duties, our civic responsibilities, is to go out and vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for, just please go out and vote because it is important. A lot of people in our world do not have that opportunity. So that is all I have. I'd also like to mention that Kent Historical Society has a number of events coming up. I wasn't planning to speak about those tonight and I don't have Facebook on my phone, but if you go to the Facebook page, I believe they have a presentation about Israel Putnam, the general coming up at the end of this month. And I think they're doing something at Casa Severe Church with a tour of the cemetery on the 8th. And if anyone here knows additional information, please feel free to share it. I don't have Facebook here. Go. Here you go. Oh, great. Thank you. Some people do have Facebook on their phones. So the presentation about uh, Major General Israel Putnam will be the 28th of September at 5 p.m. Um, at the Kent Public Library. And then um, at the Casa Severe Church on Horse Pound Road, that's going to be the 8th of October, Saturday, if you're not at the football game. <laughs> uh, 2 to 4 p.m., guided stroll through the historic cemetery. Um, and I think they have other things coming up, but those are the ones I see here on the phone. I encourage you to check out their site. Thank you. <laughs> All right. 
Any other announcements? Nope. Okay. Public comment? Hello, my name is Carlo Albano. I'm here for a friend of mine, um, a local realtor representing them. I had, uh, Lynn Boone, I had sent a letter regarding property alongside her home. I think everybody's familiar with the property. So um, we're requesting an exchange of land. Um, the Brunos bought this property over 20 years ago. And without realizing that the driveway that's directly on the side of their house is a paper town road. Um, they've maintained it, they've paved it, and they've continuously used it for over 20 years. On the other side of that road is another 10 lots that the Brunos own. And uh, what they're proposing is to offer an equivalent piece of property at the other end back to the town. So a, an exchange of land to make the properties more conforming. And uh, one of the reasons she's doing this is Miss Bruno lost her husband a couple of years ago, and financially she's decided to sell a home. As a realtor, I explained to her that it's going to be a difficult sale without the ownership of the driveway that connects to her house. She, do she doesn't have another area to put a driveway in because her septic's in the front of the house. I think as you've all seen it, it um, makes a lot of sense on paper. It should be a relatively easy exchange, and I think it would uh, be in the best interest of the town and the resident. So we'd like to know in favor of how we can proceed with that. So we have looked at this piece of property. It just, just, you may not know the answer to this, but historically, how did the property end up on both sides of the paper town road? They had purchased additional property. It came that property. way. There was, it, wasn't, it wasn't purchased together. It was two separate things, purchased one, and on the other side of the town road, purchased yes. the other one. So obviously, knowing the location, it's a paper town road that goes basically into a cliff, it looks like. Uh, right. Unusable, never going to be a road extending up through the property. Um, we discussed it. I don't know if we ever actually decided how we were going to deal with it, but I don't think there was anybody that was completely against being open to the proposition. We just need to know more of how we would proceed with this process, too, because it's the first time that we've had to deal with it. Um, just so everybody is clear, the exchange is for a piece of property at the end of the lot that's also a town paper road. So it would give the town, if they ever did want to climb the mountain a, a, a double wide path to get up the mountain it's not it, right. I mean, if, if we look think about it from what the town benefit would be in the future and I honestly don't see us ever building a road up the mountain I don't see how it's feasible but it would give us a wider right of way to get up through there or, or ownership to get up through there so it's it's not out of the question I don't think anybody and I don't want to speak for everybody was against it but we needed to talk to the right people to understand how that would move forward at this point. I would imagine the town attorney could advise and, yeah. and Ms. Bruno's attorney could draw paperwork to do that, but it would make a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think you got pictures of it also. We did. Yeah. yeah, I think when the Bruno's purchased this property, they just assumed the driver was part of it, and unfortunately it was never, it never came up until many years later, and that's why they even bought more property on the other side for you to have a continuous large piece of property. The other property is probably large enough to build, but wouldn't meet the requirements with the health department today. So it would be vacant land. It, it's, it's interesting historically to wonder how those little tiny short paper roads ended up all the way, literally yeah. into the side of a hill all the way across. It was kind of poor planning from the beginning. I would have said they should have just made it lots alongside of Towner's Road. But. And there is access, I mean, we looked, there is access to the back property, which is actually owned by the town of Kent, right. up behind, all up from going up around by Ryan's Park and coming in from the top side, there's full access on the more level side. So I don't know why they would have put these little jogs of paper roads all the way down the length of the road, it looks like. Right. Every so many lots, they just drew a paper road lot into the side of the mountain. But, well, if you look, Chris, just from what I was provided tonight, it extends that road. So the plan, I think, what I would guess, because they're, they're in uh, the same spot as the prior road. So it was for future development to of To get this up whole into area. there, but when you hit that shaded spot where their house is, it goes from, it goes like yeah. that. Yeah, right. so I would imagine that when they were where this Drawing is it on a piece of paper, it looked good. Yeah, right. and in real life it didn't. The thought was, we'll deal with this later. Right, <laughs> no, it made sense. Yeah, as far as developable, pro developable property, it's not. So no. 
like I said, I think we'd be in the best interest of everyone to make it, it, it's, it's almost a wash for us. It doesn't hurt us. It doesn't take away from us. So, as far as guidance, how to proceed? We'll, we'll be in touch with, with the... Be in uh, touch with us? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Give and who, is, yeah, who is the attorney working for Ms. Bruno? We'll, we'll get you that information. I just got one quick question. Sure. We own that road right now, right, where their driveway yes. is? So we are legally responsible if, God forbid, somebody got hurt on there. We could be sued. It, it could be a liability issue. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, it's been paved, it's, like I said, continuously maintained as part of the house. So for every reason, it makes a lot of sense for the town and for the owners. Oh, as Chris said, I'm not against it at all. I just, I think our liability issue alone is making a good reason for us not exactly. to be there. Yeah, it gets us out of the liability of it. Well, well thank you for your time. We'll thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, you want to comment on this? You sure? Huh? If, if it's the one I think, and I don't want to get into details on it. Right. I think there's a, it's a little bit, the, the details are a little different on that, on what you we're dealing with here. You can advise us if there's any other questions. Yeah, I think absolutely. this makes a lot of sense because it would be an even exchange. So yeah. just for that purpose, I yeah. think it's, it, it should be an And that's not an exchange on that right. issue that they're right. talking about. Yeah, we're not asking to buy or, right. or sell. Or, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Sue Kotzer, Town of Kent. Um, two weeks ago I had a meeting. Um, we talked about an easement sought for the commercial property. Um, in the paper, it was reported that several years ago the property was owned by Clancy Relocation and Logistics. It was never owned by Clancy. I just want to make that clarification that the reporter is incorrect. We didn't write that article. I know you didn't, but I just want you to know. No, no, I read it. I saw mm -hmm. that too. It's incorrect. They never owned it. They were looking to develop it. They were somebody mm -hmm. interested. And in then they left. Right. But they got the, they did get the easement. The easement was granted, but they never owned it. And then they backed out of the project. It was granted and then terminated. It was? It was terminated. When, yes. the, when the company backed out, they terminated the easement. Yes. I didn't know that. I thought it was never granted. Oh, no, no it was. It. That, was have... that was pre, it predates me being oh, on the you board. Were here I wasn't involved, but where I just came I out of this, it was. I think you were here. I thought you were here. <laughs> Clancy? No, it was the next one. After the next Clancy. one. Oh. Okay, I just want to make that clarification. Clancy was the first one, then there was another one looking at it. That's yes. the one that I was oh, okay. on the board for. All right. We don't take our facts from the paper, don't worry. Pardon? We don't, we don't use the facts from the paper. Mm -hmm. okay. we don't. <laughs> Other people read there. it. I know. And they need to know. Although, Sue, I will tell you, you gave me that information about that grant program for the markers, and I reached out to Jason, who came and did the presentation to us. Unfortunately, this year's window for application has passed, but we're going to look into other avenues to get that marker done. Good evening. Good evening. Madeline Perez, Lake Carmel resident. Um, I'm just here to thank the town for the beautiful flowers that was sent for the 9-11 silent blue light vigil. It was a success. A lot of people showed up. I was able to bring people that couldn't go out to the one in town for their own reason to show up and um, start to heal. And I really appreciate that. It was very special. And it was very moving. Um, just a token of our appreciation. Oh, that's a nice picture. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and so everything was donated by the pre by the residents. Lighting, uh, water. Oh, that's, that's very pretty. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much Thank for you. your support. Anybody else? I make a motion to adjourn. If there's nobody else that wants to talk, say anything. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See everyone in two weeks.